Welcome to the Men of Integrity, Men That Rescue Men and Women. And we are delighted that you've joined us tonight for another journey through the Word of God. I have with me tonight again the Apostle J. Edward Fisher from Saint Bless Center you. in Copper's Cove and the Apostle Bishop G. L. Grace Bless from you. the New Zion Christian Fellowship here in Colleen, Texas. Hey man, we want to just first make this appeal, Bishop, to the people. And it was on my heart as I came in this morning, just like going to church, the Lord say, so a seed, bring an offering. And so that's what I want to do. I want to be the first to be that example. I saw a $100 seed into KPLE this morning. I want you to follow my lead, open up a channel of blessing, and I want you to be blessed. And this is the order of God, so follow my lead. God bless you. It is so important to be able to sow the seeds of faith where God is able to release blessings. And Bishop, we thank you so much, amen, for being that example. This is the season and the time, my brethren, that the Word of God must be released to the people that are less fortunate than you and I because this is the season that they can be healed, delivered, set yeah. free, mm -hmm. amen, and experience the multitude of prosperity that the Bible declares for the saints of God. Man. That's what we want to talk to you about tonight, realigning yourself that you may experience all that God has promised you. Our text tonight is found in Psalms 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins are ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done all this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Staying aligned with God is so important. And we hear that David here writes the psalm because he feels he has fallen somewhat out of alignment with yeah. God. Mm -hmm. And the desire to be aligned with God. It says, staying aligned with God, being in step with his will, being in unity with the spirit. What does these terms exactly mean? How do we get aligned with God? And if we fall out of alignment with him, how can we fix it? These are the things that we want to discuss tonight. Let's talk about alignment. Well, Bishop, I think first when I think of alignment, I think of agreement. Uh, agreement will point to obedience. And again, of course, if I disobey, it means I disagree with God. Mm -hmm. In order for me to come on one accord with God, I got to come in agreement with him and think like him. Come in agreement with his word. That will produce obedience. Amen. Yeah, and Amos, you know, 3 and 3 says, how can two walk together? except they be agreed. And so we, we got to either be with God or against God. Mm -hmm. The alignment is a very simple concept that has to do with your soul attitude towards God. Mm -hmm. And at any moment in time, you either sincerely care about pleasing Him or you do not. Just what you said there. Mm -hmm. If you do not, then you are in alignment with him if you do. Mm -hmm. And alignment is not about behavior, nor is it undone by sin. Mm -hmm. You can be aligned with God in your soul and still be sinning in your body. In these cases, you do not enjoy sin. Your flesh must enjoy it, but inside your soul will be groaning in uh, rebellion. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 talk about this then, the attitude of the soul. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, you know Jesus tried to give us a great attitude with God. You know He say, "Be ye perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect." Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we got to come into alignment with Him by first of all thinking like Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking like God, acting like God against oppositions and situation. Uh, the same way God would act. Yes. Okay. I think also, Apostle, that, you know, in order to come in alignment and dealing with that soul realm, Bishop, mm -hmm. as you're saying, I think when Apostle said the mind, because right in our soul is three, is mind, will, 
and emotion. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to think like God, which is in my soulless room, I got to come in agreement with his word. I got to mm -hmm. meditate, as Joshua there said, Joshua 1 and 8, meditating on the law, meditating on that word of God day and night. And again, as you was alluding to, Bishop, how sometimes we can come into a place of disobedience through the the emotional realm, mm -hmm. and oftentimes believers live so much from the feeling, so much from mm -hmm. the emotion, they don't know how to live by faith. They wait on feelings to make decisions, and so I mm -hmm. make decisions on how I feel, which is in the soulless realm, is mm -hmm. a byproduct yeah. of the emotion. Yes. And again, faith is not a feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, like, see, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. So yes. we gotta go back to his word and learn how to obey mm -hmm. and walk in discipline. Mm -hmm. So what does, what does, perfect alignment look like uh, with God. Because when we, we get saved, we get filled with the Holy Spirit, and we start walking in the obedience with God. And it's just like anything else, after a while, it has to be recalibrated. Mm -hmm. okay? It has to be aligned again because sometimes yeah. it just drifts off. And with mm -hmm. God, you can just drift off a little bit and be totally out of the will of God. Yeah. So what does perfect alignment look like with God? I think perfect alignment is the way he set everything up. Mm -hmm. uh, spirit, soul, body. I believe spirit man is first. He says, seek first the kingdom in Matthew 6 and 33. And we're created and designed that way um, to be spirit man first. Uh, through, uh, man is triune, made in three parts, but two thirds of us is eternal. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only one third of us, uh, Bishop, that is physical, mm -hmm. uh, it's temporal. Yeah. So, the, and I say it like this, that the spirit man is king and the soul is servant and the, uh, the, the body is the slave. So the slave shouldn't be running things. That's the right. king, the spirit man should be running things. So again, we got to, I believe the perfect alignment for God, because he want to be first, you got to acknowledge him first. Mm -hmm. The 10 commandments, Exodus 20, we deal with God first, the order of prayer, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. He talks about him first. Luke 11 talks about him first. So we have to learn to put him first, put the spirit man first, perfect order. Yeah. Let's put this in, let's put this body, this mind, this soul in the shop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And let's see if we can realign it. David, he talks about, first of all, he acknowledged that he has sinned. He acknowledged that the alignment somehow has gotten off track. And I believe that every now and then, we as men and women of God have to get back into the face of God, into the Word of God, to ensure that nothing has gone uh, wayward, away from God. And if so, not just downplay it, but realize that somewhere, somehow, I'm offline. Mm -hmm. So he acknowledges this. So the first order of alignment, would you say, would be to acknowledge that maybe somewhere, it may not be street sin, mm -hmm. but I've fallen off and I've gotten out of alignment with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, um, it definitely, um, if something is, uh, you can tell when something is out of alignment, it mm -hmm. just doesn't measure up. And in our case, we have a conscience. Right. And so we must be vigilant mm -hmm. and check our conscience. And, and then we find that our, we're not in line with God. We must acknowledge that like David did. Uh, quickly and uh, uh, and definitely yeah. because uh, something is just wrong. That peace is not ruling in our hearts like right. it should be. See? Mm -hmm. Let me throw something at you, Bishop, and, and you can attack this. W when you drive your vehicle, you can feel the it's out of alignment. Yeah. Would you say, and how would you describe it, when you're no longer at peak of pleasing God? Mm -hmm. When you can start letting things slide and yeah. not be in total, mm -hmm. talk yeah. to me about that. I think yeah. that's so perfect, Bishop. I think it's uh, discipline, and I think is well, let's go back to the vehicle, putting it in shopping, and we're driving, and again, if your vehicle is pulling to the right, you know, okay, listen, we need to have it looked at, but here's what we would do, Bishop, sometime, uh, not saying that we're cheap, but we will keep driving. We'll keep driving until we look at our tires, the tires are getting bald, and it says you need alignment. You yeah. need alignment, yeah. a front end alignment. And so we and sometimes people uh, sacrifice pleasure instead of going back to saying, listen, you need to fix this before you lose a front end, yeah. before the transmission go. Go and have this thing fixed. But our spiritual life is the same way. We will continue to drift until we're so deep in sin 
that it cost us so much to get out. My, my, my goodness. Yeah, and you know, the, um, we have to understand that it's not going to get any better yeah. unless we bring it to God and get it fixed. You know, yeah. somehow, somehow we're hoping that that alignment on that vehicle is going to straighten up, but yeah. that's, that's that's not, not going to happen. It ain't going to happen. And so is it with our lives? Mm -hmm. We yeah. start yeah. drifting, and now anger is setting in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now I'm, I'm not content anymore with the things of the church or the things of God. And mm -hmm. now I'm becoming a drifter. Now I'm half mm -hmm. coming and now I'm half praying yeah. and now I'm half reading my word. Mm -hmm. And so the alignment now, mm -hmm. which would at the beginning when we were perfectly aligned, would have yeah. me feeling some kind of way mm -hmm. if I'm no longer doing what God said do. Yeah. Yes. Let's look at the next thing David said. He says, make me to hear joy and gladness. Mm -hmm that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Mm -hmm. okay. What is he talking about here? Talk to me, brother. Well, I think that uh, one of the things, uh, David is, again, uh, coming to God to a place of submission, as he know only God can. Bring me back to that place of hearing the joy and the gladness, God. And I think repentance, the depths of repentance, determine the depths of my deliverance. Mm -hmm. So as I begin to repent, as David is doing, making his way back, he is petitioning the only one that can bring us back in alignment. And again, uh, Bishop, as you was alluding to, mm -hmm. uh, us being as as a vehicle, I think all of the warning signs are oftentimes there, but we ignore the warning signs, just like in a vehicle, all of the little signs, okay, you need to check this, you need to check this, you need to change this, you need to fix this, but we keep going, keep going, we ignore all of the warning signs. Yeah, well, I like to work with that vehicle too, because you know, it, um, the vehicle doesn't stop as it used to stop, yeah. you know, uh, sliding yeah. a little bit more. Is, um, yeah. Um, you know, the, the brakes don't feel as yeah. what they, you know, something is going wrong. And unless we check it, uh, like I say, it's not going to get any better. Sometimes we hope and we procrastinate, but it's not going to get better. Yeah. You know, when you're driving that vehicle and you first buy that vehicle, Feel it's good. almost soundproof <laughs> and yeah, it feels yeah. good. Mm. And when you're with God and you first get saved, oh, and get yeah. filled with the yeah. Holy Spirit, you're riding good, you're feeling good, you're flowing in the Holy Spirit. But now you're beginning to hear things that don't bring you joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You're beginning to experience things mm -hmm. that don't bring you peace. My brothers, can we say that now you have beginning to get out of alignment line, because yeah. the majority right, of the things that right, you're yeah. hearing and experiencing is not bringing the joy of the Lord to yeah. your heart and to your mind. Y'all mm -hmm. got to talk with me a little bit yeah. here now. Amen. Look what he says. He says, now, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Mm. What is he saying here now? Mm -hmm. I, again, uh, he crying out concerning his sin because I believe sin is simply out of alignment. Yes. Sin is, is just disobedience. I do not agree with God. Uh, anytime, I think like this, Bishop, if I second guess uh, what he's telling me to do, I've already entered into a level of disobedience. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, and I believe David is saying the same thing and um, he's petitioning God to blot out uh, again, his uh, iniquities and asking for forgiveness of his sin. And that's realigning spirit, soul, and body. Notice what David is doing. He's not concerned about the body right now. He's concerned about the spirit man. I got to get my spirit man and my soul back in alignment with the one that created me. And so he coming to God and saying, Lord, this thing is greater than me. One thing I've learned, a bishop and apostle, that sin is greater than us. Yeah. That's why it took God to again to intervene and give us again an order how to come to him and overcome sin and that is through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Why would you stay out of alignment with God? Why would you continue to struggle at such a level where you no longer experience the joy, mm -hmm. the peace, the righteousness of God? Because Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and its righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. So we're getting ready now to break this thing down to you, but I need you to deal right now with the question of why would I continue to stay out of alignment, first of all, with the shepherd that God has placed in my life, the body of Christ, mm -hmm. the church, which I am supposed to be, amen, attending with, amen, and even my own self. Why am I out of alignment with the disciplines and the directives that God has given me to be able to prosper? Mm -hmm. Apostle, let's deal with this. The first thing he begins to talk about, he says, create in me 
mm -hmm. a clean heart. I'm mm -hmm. thinking this is spiritual, as Bishop has said. Oh, yeah. Talk to mm -hmm. me about this right here. Yeah, well, you know, um, that's what God really deals with us mm -hmm. uh, from the inside out, our yeah. heart. Yeah. And, you, and, and we have to understand how God feels about sin and the, and the detriments of sin and how we got all of this stuff going on today and how uh, um, the Lord had to send his son mm -hmm. to die for us. So uh, David is recognizing that, here. I need to be clean. I need to be holy. I'm dealing with a, a clean God, mm -hmm. a holy God, yeah. a sanctified God. God mm -hmm. and um, nothing else is going to fix it. We can rub it, we can w wash it on the outside, but it's on the inside, yeah. the candle of the Lord yeah. that God deals with. And so I need a clean heart to deal with mm -hmm. a holy God. Bishop, when you look at the heart, most of the time when people mm -hmm. are out of alignment in relationship, mm -hmm. they say, My heart is broken. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they, 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 they says that my heart is heavy. Yeah. Uh, let, let's, let's work with that a little bit here and see if we can add some more to what Apostle just released here. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in agreement with Apostle and, and with you as well, Bishop, that heart is the center of man. Mm -hmm. And that's why God said, if you notice so many times, and I believe especially in the Old Testament, heart is interchangeable with spirit. And so when you hear uh, David is saying, heart here, clean me. And the first thing he said, God, I worship you from my heart. As yeah. Apostle was alluding to, mm -hmm. again, a holy God. So he says, from my heart, fix the thing that I got to worship you with first. Mm -hmm. Fix mm -hmm. that yeah, first. Yeah. Fix my heart first. So all of these other things, like you said in Matthew 6, all these other things will straighten out. But yes. fix this inner man first. Fix the center of me first. Well, mm -hmm. I got to worship mm -hmm. you. The Bible said, love the Lord with all thy heart. Yes. and believe in the Lord with thy heart. Mm -hmm. See, again, so the heart is the first thing that we need to get fixed. The way we get that fixed is deal with that spiritual ear, which is right in the center of the word heart. Let heart. me add to that. Go ahead. You know, um, uh, we may look good on the outside, but the real man is our heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it says, so a man think it in his heart, so is he. You might look good, but in your heart you're not good, and therefore you're not. Yes. Let me let me interject this, Bishop, mm -hmm. because sometimes I believe believers do not understand when you hear the word heart, mm -hmm. it is not talking about the physical organ that yeah. pumps blood. That's yeah. right. And so and they be reading the Bible and they say the heart, my heart is okay, but no, he's he's not talking about that physical thing that pumping right. blood yeah. that's in right. your inside of your chest. Right. He's talking about the center man, that spirit man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I believe that people don't really realize that they really say that all the time because mm. if your heart was really broken, yeah, it can't <laughs> pump blood, you'd be dead. <laughs> what they're really talking about is the very essence of who yeah. they are. They said, man, That's right. I'm, yeah. I'm broken, man, right. I'm hurt. I can't eat, I can't sleep, I mm. can't work. Why is it that when man fall out of the alignment with God, he can still eat and sleep? <laughs> but when you fall out of alignment with him or her, you can't, you can't eat, you can't sleep, you automatically go on a fast. <laughs> because you're in such a state of depression, man, mm -hmm. that you already fasting for whatever. But yeah. when you really, 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 really understand God, mm -hmm. your heart, heart really needs to be made pure and clean yeah. to get that alignment mm -hmm. back with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look oh, yeah. what he says next. He says, create in me, he says, renew a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. Who, who's on tackle that? Renew well, a right spirit. You know, righteousness exalted a nation, mm -hmm. but sin is a reproach to any people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he knows that he needs to be right with God. That, that brings us on a line, but you understand mm -hmm. what yeah. I'm saying? And so when we are right with God, our confidence comes back. Mm -hmm. yes. You understand? Our strength comes back. Our joy comes back, and he knows, and, and, and he's feeling the pain of it right now. Mm -hmm. See, that's what he's, he's, he's talking about. He said, Lord, you know, I'm, I, I, I need you. I need, mm -hmm. to be, I need to be right. And so um, he says, Lord, search my heart. Know my thought. See yeah. if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way of everlasting because I need to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think too, uh, Apostle, uh, when you hear the word renew, I think uh, just like we was teaching here tonight is that mm -hmm. renew means realign. Mm 
because mm -hmm. when you yeah. hear the prefix re, it means to put back. Yes. Right. And uh, if you say renew, that means back to new. That's right. Again, so we're talking the vehicle again. Let's get this vehicle back to the new standard. Let's get it to the way we was driving it at first. Don't, we can't just bear, <laughs> we can't just buy an air freshener to make it smell new, mm -hmm. and we didn't do nothing to the engine or to the transmission or to all the other uh, parts of the, the vehicle. But I believe renewing the mind is so important to again give me in a, in a renewed of a right spirit, right attitude, right mindset. Spirit, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. He says renew the right spirit. When you're talking about spirit, let's, let's break that down a little bit more as it relates to what the people need to understand. You created a clean heart in me. Mm -hmm. That suggests what? I, I think the first thing we need to understand about spirit, uh, again, uh, Bishop, is word, is knowledge, is unseen. You yeah. cannot see a spirit. Yeah. You cannot see God. So again, um, even when we deal with faith, faith is from the spirit realm. Yeah. Cannot see, cannot feel. Yeah. So again, when we start dealing with uh, God is saying, renew me in the right spirit, right mindset. We got to go back to the word of God. Yes. Jesus said this in John 6, 63 and 64. Yeah, right. He said, the words that I speak to you, they, you they are spirit yeah, and life. That's what yeah. I'm See, again, so that's the yeah. way I believe we have to come to be in right spiritual protocol yeah. is to come right back to the word of God. That's why he gave us his word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in the renewing of the heart, okay, Thy word, David says, have I there hid in my heart that, right. that I might not sin against yeah. you. Same yeah. David, yes. Yeah. Same David. Same yeah. David. The spirit man needs spirit food. Yeah. You can't, you can't <laughs> yeah. fix him. You can't fix him any other way. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can wash your car, but if it's not fixed, it's just going to look good, yeah. not functioning. No. Yeah. David doesn't begin to talk about the presence of God until he has first requested the clean heart and the right spirit. So in order to get into the presence of God or stand in the presence of God, your heart got to be right yeah. mm -hmm. and your spirit got to be right. Yeah. And now he yeah. asks that he be not cast out of his presence. And then he says, now, take not thy Holy Spirit mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't take now the power from me. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. and, and now let me operate. I'm, uh, now, y'all help me here. Yeah. Help me to operate now by the anointing and the power that you have given me once I'm back in your presence, mm -hmm. once I have a right spirit, and once I have a clean heart. Mm -hmm. So many people are out of line with God because they're trying to operate by the power of God totally out of alignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Talk to me. And that can't be done because uh, you remember Samson? Mm -hmm. yes. Samson, you know, he was operating by the spirit of God and God was moving him and everything like that. But he got into sin, got mm -hmm. out of alignment, and he didn't know when the Holy Spirit left. But when he went to perform again, the Holy Spirit was not there. Mm. Yeah. Simply because, again, covenant mm -hmm. were broken, out of alignment. That's right. Agreement out was broken alignment. because he was a Nazarite, and that vow that was put upon him of uh, the things he should not touch, mm -hmm. again, broke that covenant out of alignment with God. Out of, see, when you're out of alignment, then you're not in position for the power. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, again, you're out of position for power and provision. Yes. You see, it's just like in the military. Again, if you are out in the field somewhere and you need uh, supplies, you got to be in the grid coordinates that you tell me to be because when right. I drop it, I'm dropping it where you're supposed, right. supposed to be. To be. Alignment, right. agreement. D let me just, you use the word there, and I want to come back and let us deal with that. You says, but you keep trying to perform. Mm -hmm. You keep trying to pray. Mm -hmm. You keep trying to do what it else that you're really trying to do out of alignment, oh, yeah. and it's not working, and it is causing frustration to come into your life. Mm -hmm. And the frustration is causing you to begin to doubt God. That's right. And you're playing directly to the hands of the enemy. But you have to realize that if this thing is not working for me, mm -hmm. then there must be some alignment problem here as it relates to God. I love it when he says uh, in Malachi, he says, I will open up the windows of heaven yeah. and pour you out. Well, yeah. if the window is over here and you over here, That's guess right. what? He's yeah. pouring it out, but you're not getting yeah. anything because you're out totally of out, of alignment, out of alignment with God. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that a little more. Well, you know, you're out of... You're out of the way of God. Yeah. You're not on the path of God. The mm -hmm. path of God is truth and mercy. But when that's not happening, you're, uh, you're, you're not in the way of God. God hasn't moved, but we have gotten out of, out alignment, of alignment 
and something is wrong with us. God never gets out of a line. Mm -hmm. God has not moved. Mm -hmm. We have not moved. <laughs> You have moved. Yeah. We have moved. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the alignment is necessary. Let's deal with this one. I think we got time just to hit this one here. It says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation mm -hmm. and uphold me with thy free spirit. What is he saying here? Mm -hmm. I believe this, Bishop, and to you know, the audience and the congregation tonight, restoration is part of revival. Mm -hmm. yes. And once we repent, Revive, restoration comes. Really from verse 10 to 13 is flat out revival. Yes. It's mm -hmm. just restoration. We see the power of God coming from the Holy Ghost. But the first thing David did, get, David did with his heart, saying God created me a clean heart, renew him in the right spirit. He re realigned himself again for the power and the purpose of God. I believe what gets us out of alignment is we exalt pleasure above purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it true yeah. tonight? Self-examination that you are striving to be blessed. You are striving to know God. But the truth of the matter is, it's not really happening the way that the Bible says it's supposed to happen. Mm. It could simply be one problem. Mm -hmm. I'm not in alignment with God. I'm now crying out, I'm now seeking God. But whether a man seeks or cry out, until he realigns himself with God through repentance, and the things that we have declared in the word tonight, it seems to elude us. Mm -hmm. And we're fighting a fight that we cannot win unless we realign ourselves with God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We've given you the email, the bishop at the riversministry.com. We want you to send us your questions. We want to deal with your questions on the air as it relates to the things that you want to know about God how you want to realign yourself with God, how you want to walk in the power of God, and what does it take for you to experience all the mighty wonders and works of God. Mm -hmm. I want to take a few minutes and, and let both of these apostles just take a couple of minutes and exalt you again as it relates to this alignment. Apostle Fisher, look in that camera and say something to the people that will encourage them for our time right now. Yeah, well, you know, we just want you uh, to be in prosperity with God. This is what God's heart is, that I would that you prosper and yeah. be in health. But he says, yeah, as your soul. In other words, as your soul prosper, as you get in line with God, these things will come and be. So yeah. we encourage you uh, uh, to um, go after God with all your heart, soul, mind, and body, and I guarantee you, you won't be sorry. 30 yeah. seconds. Well, I want to share with everyone tonight that it's about your assignment. And that, again, once you align yourself with the right uh, environment, again, it makes the assignment easy. Once you get that assignment, the prosperity will be there, the increase mm -hmm. will be there, the blessing will be there, the healing will be there. Get in alignment with God. Starts with submission. Yield yourself to God. You've heard it tonight. God's ready to do great and marvelous things in your life. Mm -hmm. Start the night mm -hmm. by joining Bishop with the seed of faith. Trust yeah. and see if the Lord would bless you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Yeah. Then align yourself with repentance, prayer, and ask God to do great and marvelous things in your life. This is Bishop Shaw, and we're praying for your miracle. Amen. How do you bear your, your ship, Lord? Rivers of living water. Oh, yeah, living water.